All right, so here's an exercise in which you are studying the differences between sets of measure zero and content zero. And one of the um, main differences which we'll explore here is that sets of content zero must be bounded, but sets of measure zero can be unbounded. Okay, so in A we're taking an unbounded set, proving that does not have content zero. So let A be Un here. Let A be unbounded. Um, so the idea here is that any any cover of A, any finite cover of A is a finite set of bounded, it's a finite collection of bounded sets. And so their union is itself a finite set. And so it cannot be unbounded, so it cannot possibly cover all of A. And there's an important distinction here that I sort of um, forgot about when I was uh, writing this up for, a, for the first time, and it was causing me some, some confusion. So if we look at our definition of closed rectangles, closed rectangles cannot be unbounded. I'm used to thinking of rectangles where you can allow one of the endpoints of one of the edges to go off to infinity, because um, that would technically be still be a closed set. Um, however, we don't allow that in our definition, and that's very important here. For uh, for one reason, it's important. Um, um, because it gives us this quick argument for part A, but it's also really important because um, with this in mind, um, I'll, I'll actually talk about this a little bit more um, when we get to part B and actually look at a, um, a bounded, an unbounded, what am I saying? When we look at uh, an unbounded set of measure zero. Okay, so let A be unbounded. Um, if u1 through um covers a, then no. Given um, bounded rectangles u1 through um, the union of all of the ui's is also bounded because you just take something that encapsulates all of them. In fact, you can even construct a rectangle which is a bound for all of these. What you do is you take, um, for every single coordinate of the space, let's say we're in Rn here, um, for each coordinate in Rn, um, you choose the left bound to be the smallest coordinate of all of the UIs, and you choose the right bound to be the largest coordinate of all the UIs. And then you just take the direct product of this thing, and you have a rectangle which covers all of your finite rectangles. So anyways, the, the union is also bounded, so it cannot cover A, because A is unbounded, so given any bounded set, there are elements of A which lie outside of that bounded set. Okay, um, so um, not only can you not find a finite cover of volume less than epsilon, which covers A, you can't find a finite cover at all. Um, so A cannot have content zero because you can't even cover it by finitely many rectangles. Okay, so now let's move on to B and we want to give an example of a closed set of measure zero which does not have content zero. I don't know why they specify closed here because may, I, I assume they're just trying to help you out because um, Open sets of measure zero, un, um, yeah. So the the main idea here is that if you have is that you need to 
Part A sort of makes you think, oh, well, maybe we should look for an unbounded set. If we want a set which is, which has measure zero but does not have content zero, then if it happens to be unbounded, then we can already rule out it being, um, having content zero. And then all you need to do is prove that as measure zero. So anyways, um, what we do now is, um, so the thing about being a closed set, finding an open set of measure zero which does not have content zero, they, I'm nearly positive they exist. Yeah, because you just, yeah, there are open sets of measure zero. Um, they're difficult to construct, but they do exist. And then you could just take a bunch of them and put them together and they'd be unbounded. Um, but you'd have to you'd have to take this one set and take a union and stuff and use the fact that countable unions of null sets are null. Anyways, um, so be looking for closed sets is actually what you're going to want to do here because you just take sets where all the points are isolated. So let's take. Um, for example, n, natural numbers 1, 2, etc., can be covered by um, sets of the form and so what we do is we take i minus epsilon times 2 to the minus i, and then i plus epsilon times 2 to the minus i. So what this means is that we have a, um, so around the number 1, we have an interval of length let's see here, epsilon one half, so one half epsilon plus one half epsilon is epsilon. Let's just make it minus one. So around, so now, around the number one, we have an interval of length one half. Around the number two, we have an interval of length one fourth, et cetera, et cetera. And if you add all of these, so so around each element of the natural, around each natural number, you have an interval, and if you sum up the volume of these intervals, you get one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus etc. Cetera, etc., cetera, which will sum to one. No, because there's the epsilon. It's epsilon times one half plus epsilon times one fourth plus etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Then when you add those, you get epsilon, and you can make epsilon as small as you want. And thus has measure zero. However, n is unbounded and thus has content zero. by part A. Okay. So, let's see here. So, I guess the one thing that I was going to say here is that um, if you... So, first of all, this finishes the exercise, so we're done here. But, going back to my point about the cover being consisting of potentially infinite sets, um, of course this argument still works in R, where if you have the nat if you consider the natural numbers in R, then um, it's un or then it's unbounded and thus has content zero. However, if you extend this to R let's try embedding N in R2 where you think of um, you choose just any particular element of R, and you consider the pairs of numbers i, comma, zero, for example. Um, so, basically what you're doing is you're taking the cross product of the natural numbers with one particular number in R. And this gives you 
a subset of R2. So what this looks like is if you look on a graph, you've just got, let's, let's say it's at um, y equals 1. Then your set here just looks like a bunch of dots along here. Now, here again, um, if you use bounded rectangles, then the set again does not have content 0 in R2. However, if you allow rectangles to be unbounded, then you also need to make the distinction that you cannot have a particular edge of a rectangle have zero length. Because what you could do is you could take a rectangle that's just a line here. And then this will have volume zero, but it will cover the entire set. And so the set will have content zero in R2. And that's sort of not what you want. Um, you want to imagine that if you make your space bigger, then your sets can only get smaller. Um, so for example, if you have a set of, um, generally if you have like a line segment in R, that has what measure equal to whatever the length of the line segment is, then if you put it into R2, then it doesn't have any width anymore, and so um, it will have measure zero. So if you embed a set into a larger space, its measure can decrease. Um, however, you don't want it to be the case that its measure can increase, i.e., for example, for here, um, you don't want to have a set which does not have content zero, namely the natural numbers, and then embed it into a larger space, and all of a sudden it has content zero. Because that doesn't make sense to embed something in a larger space, but the set to get larger. Um, and so if you're allowing your sets to be unbounded, then you need to ensure that your um, rectangles have positive width on all sides. And that's also really important because that way you're really, the way that you're covering things and the way that you're measuring things using volume really is taking into account the dimension of the space that you're in. Um, and that's also why, like, if you look back at the beginning of the section, it says that using open rectangles instead of closed rectangles as your sets that you're covering will work just as well. Um, if you allow things to have zero width, then it's not not the same anymore um, because you can't have an open rectangle with zero width in one particular coordinate because then it'd be empty. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I guess I'm just sort of rambling at this point, but the point is that really make sure that you're looking at the definitions um, because if you don't, then you can end up proving things which are not true. Well, not necessarily proving things that which are not true, but your definitions can be unnatural, I guess. Um, so yeah, in this textbook we're using covers and we're saying that the um, covers have positive finite width in each coordinate, and that's what we are going to keep in mind that that's what we're going to do for all these exercises and when you do you're able to prove exercises like this without too much difficulty so yeah as i said earlier we are done with this exercise